all organisms, even the largest, begin life from a single cell. The cell then grows by dividing into two, wherein each parent cell forms two daughter cells, which mature and further divide to form new cells. The process of cell division is vital to all living organisms. During this process, cell growth takes place, followed by DNA replication and cell division. However, the process must take place in a coordinated manner so that each cell divides correctly and the genomes in the progeny cells remain intact. The series of events by which a cell duplicates its genome, synthesizes its constituents and eventually divides to form two daughter cells is known as the cell cycle. Although the process of cell growth is a continuous one, DNA synthesis takes place only during one particular stage in the cell cycle. After DNA synthesis, the replicated chromosomes or the DNA are distributed to the daughter nuclei through a complex series of genetically controlled events during cell division. The duration of a cell cycle varies from one organism to another. A typical eukaryotic cell, like those in human beings, divides once in about every 24 hours, whereas in yeast, division takes place in about 90 minutes. Also, the cell cycle is divided into two basic phases, the interphase and the M phase or the mitosis phase. The interphase is the resting phase during which the cell prepares to divide by undergoing cell growth and DNA replication in an orderly manner. The interphase is subdivided into three phases. The G1 phase or GAP1, S phase or synthesis phase and G2 phase or GAP2. During the G1 phase or the first growth phase, normal cell functions occur. The cell continues to grow and remains metabolically active, but the DNA doesn't replicate. In the S phase or synthesis phase, the DNA synthesizes or replicates, and the amount of DNA in the cell doubles without any increase in the number of chromosomes. Also, the centriole begins to duplicate in the cytoplasm. Finally, in the G2 phase or GAP2, the cell prepares for mitosis and cell division by synthesizing proteins while the cell continues to grow. Now, the next phase of the cell cycle is the M phase, where actual cell division or mitosis takes place. The M phase begins with nuclear division, which is the division of daughter chromosomes, known as mitosis or karyokinesis. It ends with the division of the cytoplasm, which is known as cytokinesis. Did you know that in the 24-hour average cell cycle of a human cell, proper cell division lasts for only about an hour? while more than 95% of the cell cycle duration is the interphase. In adult animals, for example, in humans, some cells, like those in the heart, do not appear to display cell division. Animals also have many cells that divide occasionally, 
only to replace cells lost due to cell death or injury. Such cells that do not display further cell division exit the G1 phase and enter an inactive stage called the G0 phase or the quiescent stage. Cells in this stage remain metabolically active but proliferate only when the need arises. Moreover, in animal cells, mitotic cell division occurs only in diploid somatic cells, whereas in plants, it is seen in both haploid and diploid cells. In living organisms, the cell cycle is a series of events that leads to cell duplication and division, resulting in the growth of organisms. Mitosis or karyokinesis, along with cytokinesis, defines the M phase or the mitosis phase of the cell cycle. During mitosis, parent cell divides into two daughter cells, which are not only identical to each other, but also to the parent cell. Mitosis is also known as equational division as both the parent and the daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes. Mitosis is a continuous process. However, for convenience, it is divided into four stages of nuclear division, namely prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Prophase is the first phase of mitosis and follows the S and the G2 phases of interphase. During the S phase, the DNA synthesizes or replicates. And in the G2 phase, the cell continues to grow, but the DNA molecules formed are intertwined and not distinct. However, during prophase, chromatin condensation or the untangling of the chromosomal material takes place and the centriole that had duplicated during the S phase starts to move towards the opposite poles of the cell. Certain characteristic events mark the completion of prophase. Compact mitotic chromosomes are formed due to the condensation of chromosomal material and each chromosome is made up of two chromatids attached together at the centromere. Moreover, the centrioles that had moved to the opposite ends of the cell initiate the formation of the mitotic spindles with the help of the microtubules and the proteinaceous constituents of the cell cytoplasm. At the end of the prophase, the nucleolus, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complexes and the nuclear envelope are not visible when viewed under a microscope. Prophase is followed by the metaphase, the onset of which is marked by the disintegration of the nuclear membrane resulting in the scattering of the chromosomes in the cytoplasm. During this stage, the chromosomes can be clearly seen and studied under the microscope as their condensation is complete. Moreover, each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids bound together by a centromere. Each centromere has a small disc-shaped structure on its surface called the kinetochore. Spindle fibers attach to the kinetochores of the chromosomes and the chromosomes move towards the spindle equator. The plane of alignment of the chromosomes during this phase is known as the metaphase plate. Metaphase is followed by anaphase. At the start of this stage, the centromere of each chromosome splits simultaneously and the chromatids separate. These daughter chromatids are the chromosomes of the future daughter nuclei. The chromatids then slowly move towards opposite poles. The centromeres of the chromatids face the pole and are at the leading edge. 
while their arms trail behind. The final stage of mitosis is telophase. This stage is characterized by the chromosomes clustering at opposite spindle poles. Then the chromosomes decondense or lose their individuality as discrete elements and a mass of chromatin material tends to collect at the two poles. Moreover, a nuclear envelope is formed around each chromosome cluster and the nucleolus, Golgi complex and endoplasmic reticulum reappear at both poles. Thus, mitosis is divided into four stages at the end of which a cell segregates its chromosomes into two identical sets in two daughter nuclei. Mitosis or karyokinesis along with cytokinesis defines the M phase or the mitosis phase of the cell cycle. Mitosis results in the segregation of duplicated chromosomes into two daughter nuclei and is followed by the division of cytoplasm, that is cytokinesis, to produce two daughter cells. However, the process of cytokinesis is different in animal and plant cells. In animals, Cytokinesis is initiated by the formation of a furrow in the plasma membrane, which gradually deepens to join the center of the cell, dividing the cytoplasm into two. Plant cells, on the other hand, have a relatively inextensible cell wall, and so cell division is initiated by the formation of a cell plate in the center of the cell. Gradually, this plate grows outward to meet the existing lateral cell walls. The cell plate represents the middle lamella of the cell wall. Also, during cytokinesis, organelles like plastids and mitochondria are equally distributed between the daughter cells. Did you know that in some organisms, karyokinesis is not followed by cytokinesis? which results in the formation of a syncytium, a cell with multiple nuclei. Such a syncytium is found in the early embryo of Drosophila and the liquid endosperm of coconut. Mitosis is one of the most important cellular processes. It is also called equational division as the daughter cells inherit the same diploid number of chromosomes as in the mother cell. It is generally seen in diploid cells. However, in certain lower plants like bryophytes and social insects like honeybees, mitosis occurs in haploid cells. Mitosis or mitotic division in somatic cells is responsible for the growth of multicellular organisms. In plants, meristematic tissues, namely the apical and the lateral cambium, divide actively by mitosis, leading to the continuous growth of the plant throughout its life. It also restores the nucleocytoplasmic ratio, which is disturbed as a cell grows. Moreover, mitosis results in the formation of new cells, which replace dead cells. For example, blood cells and cells in the upper layers of the epidermis in the skin and the lining of the gut are continually replaced. Thus, Mitosis is usually accompanied by cytokinesis and plays a vital role in the growth of organisms. In sexually reproducing organisms, meiosis results in the formation of sperm cells and egg cells. Cells that undergo meiosis are diploid with two sets of chromosomes. However, these diploid cells after meiosis, produce haploid cells, 
with one set of chromosomes. Later, during the process of fertilization, these haploid cells fuse to form a diploid offspring. Thus, meiosis helps maintain the chromosome number in a species. Meiosis, like mitosis, is also preceded by an interphase stage during which DNA replicates and each chromosome doubles to consist of two identical strands of DNA. Meiosis consists of two cell divisions, namely meiosis 1 and 2. Meiosis 1 is divided into four stages. Prophase 1, Metaphase 1, Anaphase 1, and Telophase 1. Similarly, meiosis 2 is divided into four phases. Prophase 2, Metaphase 2, Anaphase 2, and Telophase 2. Meiosis 1 halves the number of chromosomes, and meiosis 2 splits the sister chromatids of each chromosome, resulting in four haploid cells. Meiosis 1 begins with prophase 1, which is typically more complex and lasts longer compared to the prophase of mitosis. Based on chromosomal behavior, prophase 1 is divided into five phases, namely leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene, and diakinesis. All through the leptotene stage, compaction of chromosomes continues and they gradually become visible under a microscope. As the DNA has already duplicated, each chromosome consists of two chromatids. In the next stage, that is, the zygotene stage, homologous chromosomes, one from the paternal set, and one from the maternal set, get attracted to each other and form pairs. This pairing is called synapsis. During this process, a complex structure known as a synaptonomal complex is formed. This complex structure consists of a pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes called a tetrad or a bivalent. The zygotene stage is followed by the pachytene stage, during which the bivalent chromosomes are clearly visible as tetrads. Moreover, large protein complexes on the synaptonomal complex, called recombination nodules, begin to appear. These nodules are believed to be the sites where crossing over occurs. Crossing over is an event unique to meiosis, wherein an exchange of genetic material occurs between the non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes. The process of crossing over is initiated by the enzyme recombinase and results in the recombination of generic material between the two chromosomes. Crossing over is very significant during the formation of gametes as it results in new combinations of genes leading to genetic variation in the offspring. By the end of the pachytene stage, recombination between homologous chromosomes is complete and the chromosomes are linked at the sites of crossing over. The next stage in prophase 1 is the diplotene stage. The beginning of this stage is marked by the dissolution of the synaptonomal complex. Moreover, the recombined homologous chromosomes of the bivalents display a tendency to separate from each other except at the crossover sites. The X-shaped part on the homologous chromosomes that holds the two together once they have crossed over is called 
a chiasmata. The diplotene stage can last for several months or years in oocytes of certain vertebrates. The final stage in prophase 1 is diakinesis, during which the chiasmata terminates. Moreover, the chromosomes fully condense and become clearly visible, while the meiotic spindle assembles and prepares the homologous chromosomes for separation. This stage represents the transition to metaphase 1 and ends with the disappearance of the nucleolus and disintegration of the nuclear envelope. Now in metaphase 1, the chromosomes line up along the equatorial plate of the cell and the spindle fibers get attached to the kinetochores of the homologous chromosomes. Metaphase 1 is followed by anaphase 1. In this phase, the chromosomes pull apart from each other along the spindle fibers and move to opposite ends of the cell. The chromosomes are still double-stranded with two sister chromatids connected at their centromeres. This marks the end of anaphase 1, which is then followed by telophase 1. In this phase, the chromosomes are at the poles, while the spindle fibers disintegrate and the nuclear envelope and the nucleolus reappear. Cell division or cytokinesis follows telophase 1 and results in two cells referred to as a dyad. Therefore, Meiosis 1, which progresses from prophase 1 to telophase 1, results in the formation of two cells with half the number of chromosomes compared to the original cell. Meiosis consists of two cell divisions, namely meiosis 1 and 2. Meiosis 1 is divided into four stages, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. Similarly, meiosis 2 is divided into four phases, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2 and telophase 2. Meiosis 1 results in two haploid daughter cells due to the separation of the homologous chromosomes in the parent cell Meiosis 2 follows meiosis 1 and results in four haploid cells. Meiosis 2 resembles mitosis as the same number of chromosomes is retained in the daughter cells. Between the two meiotic stages, there is a short-lived resting stage known as interkinesis during which the DNA doesn't replicate. Interkinesis is followed by prophase 2, a stage that is much simpler than prophase 1. During this phase, the chromosomes get thicker, shorter, and distinct, with each chromosome consisting of two chromatids. By the end of this phase, the nucleolus disappears and the nuclear envelope disintegrates. Prophase 2 is followed by metaphase 2. During this phase, the chromosomes move towards the equator and align themselves along the equatorial plane. Bipolar spindles are formed and the microtubules from the opposite poles of each spindle attach themselves to the kinetic cores of the sister chromatids. The next phase of meiosis 2 is anaphase 2. During early anaphase, the centromere of each chromosome divides longitudinally into two and splits the chromosome into two daughter chromosomes. These daughter chromosomes are then pulled to the opposite poles of the cell during the late anaphase stage. The final phase of meiosis 2 is telophase 2. During this phase, the chromosomes reach the opposite poles and a new nucleus with a nuclear membrane is organized at each pole. Did you know that all four nuclei differ from each other in genetic aspects due to the crossing over in prophase 1? Telophase 2 is generally followed by cytokinesis, during which 
the cytoplasm in each cell is equally divided, resulting in the formation of four haploid daughter cells. Meiosis is a significant process in sexually reproducing organisms. Meiosis in germ cells, followed by the fertilization of gametes, restores the chromosome number in the offspring of sexually reproducing organisms. Another significant feature of meiosis is that it leads to variation in offspring due to the crossing over in prophase 1, during which genetic materials recombine. Variation plays a very important role in the process of organic evolution. Meiosis plays a vital role in sexually reproducing organisms. The process takes place only in reproductive cells or germ cells and is also known as reduction division as the number of chromosomes is reduced to exactly half in the daughter cells.